Hey guys, this is Tom Shepard here at the Elite FTS Compound. In our recent table talk, Naomi and I went over how we kind of separate a lot of our training methods into eccentric, isometric, and concentric based methods. So what we're doing now is a series of videos where we're gonna take each of those three categories, again, revisit why they would be useful for you in your training, and also then film a lot of those methods so you can see how they're done. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just do a quick review of what are the benefits of eccentric based training methods and how we're gonna implement them. So when we say an eccentric based method, what we're talking about is a method whose primary goal is to strengthen the eccentric component of the lift or the movement. So you are still gonna perform the concentric phase of the lift in most scenarios, but the main goal of this method is gonna to be to strengthen the eccentric phase where you're lengthening under load. So when we're programming these, some of the things that we need to take into consideration are first off that, Actually, from a muscle damage point of view, eccentric actions cause a lot more muscle damage than concentric actions. Now, this has a couple of benefits for us because what that does in turn then is gives us a greater mTOR activation from that part of the lift. So we get a greater hypertrophy response from eccentric methods than we do from concentric methods or concentric part of the lift, which has a lot of benefits when we're trying to train for hypertrophy. But the thing that we need to take into account then is that because there is a lot of muscle damage, we also need to be aware that it's gonna take more to recover from than concentric only methods. So for example, when we're programming eccentric methods for athletes who have other sports that they need to play, when they're in season, we will usually take the eccentric based methods out of their training whilst they're in season because that has the highest recovery demands for them. And then likewise, if you're a lifter peaking for a meet, then you might wanna take down or take the volume down on these eccentric based methods so that you can recover better closer to your meat when the, when the weights are gonna be higher and the recovery demands are higher, okay? But the biggest benefit that we see for a lot of our lifters when we start implementing these eccentric based methods like slow tempos and things like that is that we get a better effect on strengthening the tendons and the micro tendons. So not just the main tendons that we all associate with, but when you have a muscle belly, which is basically a big bundle of muscle fibers, you also have micro tendons that connect them all together in a network. Now, when we strengthen those as well, that means the muscle fibers are better connected to each other, and then they are capable of pulling in unison better. So that means we actually get better force transfer through the muscle belly when the micro tendons are stronger. So from an injury prevention point of view, stronger tendons is gonna mean that we're less likely to injure ourselves, but also those micro tendons being stronger is gonna mean that we get better force transfer through that muscle, which means we're gonna be stronger overall. Next up, we can actually get more strength gains from eccentric dominant methods than from concentric dominant methods. So when there's been quite a few good studies now using reasonably advanced lifters where they split them into subgroups where some of the lifters will actually only do eccentric based lifting. So things like negative only reps where they're lowering heavy loads down to pins and they're not actually doing the concentric phase. And then another group who might be doing normal lifting or even concentric only lifting. And those who do eccentric only lifting actually gain more strength than those who are doing concentric based lifting or regular lifting, even though they haven't been practicing the concentric part of the lift for the majority of their training. So that shows us that the eccentric part of the lift is actually very important for at least from a neurological point of view for increasing our max strength. So what we look at that is something that I like to call strength reserve. So the idea is quite simply that if we can get to the point where we can eccentrically control 110 to say 120% of our one rep max, that strength reserve is basically a gap that we can fill with our concentric strength more easily than if our eccentric strength was lower. And in fact, in a lot of athlete and sports performance based circles, a lot of the time we're looking for the athletes to have about 120% eccentric strength just from an injury prevention point of view anyway. Next up, we get a greater activation of the antagonistic muscle group. So when we're doing say slow tempo, so let's just take the bench press as an example. If we're doing a slow tempo on the way down on a bench press, we're gonna get greater activation into the lats, the biceps and the upper back which is great for then when we go back to regular lifting, we know how to recruit those muscle groups better within the lift. And then probably the biggest benefit, in my opinion, of doing slow tempos or eccentric based methods is that when we're doing eccentric actions, we actually get a greater activation in the motor cortex. So we, again, they've done studies where you're doing an encephalograph of someone's brain activity during lifting, and during the eccentric part of the lift, the motor cortex is more active than during the concentric part of the lift, which kind of indicates to us that there is more motor learning or more coordination going on during the eccentric part of the lift than there is the concentric. So then when we're talking about beginner lifters or maybe people who are learning new lifts, 
focusing on the eccentric part of the phase where there's in, in theory more learning going on and more connections being made means that it can be a better teaching tool than regular base lifting. Okay? And last but not least, if we're dealing with someone who needs to be able to perform explosive movements or even someone who wants to do say speed work with bands like overspeed eccentrics, you first need a, a very good base of eccentric strength to be able to move quickly with a fast load. If you can't move slow with a load, there's no way that you can move fast with a load because we need to be able to create enough tension and control with that weight slowly first before we can accept that we can lose a bit of that tension to move quick. And this is quite often what we see with a lot of people doing say speed work with bands is that they don't have the prerequisite eccentric strength to do it. So they either end up moving fast but with little tension or they end up moving slow on the way down because that's the only way they can, they can keep enough tension to do the lift well. So having a good foundation of doing slow tempo work or overloaded eccentric work will actually allow those people to perform those lifts better and get more out of their speed work. So those, that's kind of like a brief overview of the benefits of having eccentric based training. Now after this, we're gonna go into all the kind of methods that we went on about in the table talk and go through them one by one so you can see how they're implemented. Until next time.